Welcome to Ministry of Hacking. Like and subscribe if you are new here. Have you ever tried to visit a website only to find it completely inaccessible? It's just gone. Sometimes that website isn't actually gone. It's being held hostage by a DDoS attack. DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. It's like a digital flash mob clogging up the entrance. Hackers use armies of hijacked computers to flood a website with traffic. It's like trying to water your houseplants with a fire hose. Think of this as a PSA about the dangers of the internet. Imagine a busy store on Black Friday. Hundreds of eager shoppers rush in, all vying for the same limited edition toaster oven. The store is overwhelmed, unable to handle the sheer volume of people. Cash registers crash, shelves are emptied, and the whole place descends into chaos. That, my friends, is essentially what a DDoS attack does, but instead of eager shoppers, it's a torrent of data packets. These data packets, like those shoppers, are just trying to connect, the problem is there are just too many of them. They flood the website's server, the poor, overworked employee in this analogy and it can't keep up. The server tries to respond to each request, but it's like trying to drink from a fire hose. It just can't handle the volume and eventually crashes, taking the website down with it. Now you might be thinking, John, that sounds terrible, but who would do such a thing? Well the answer, my friend, is a long and varied list. It could be disgruntled ex-employees, rival businesses trying to sabotage competition, or just bored teenagers in their parents' basements with nothing better to do. DDoS attacks are no laughing matter. These digital assaults can cripple businesses, disrupt essential services, and even threaten national security. Imagine a hospital's website being taken down during a major emergency, or a bank's online services being disrupted, preventing people from accessing their money. The consequences can be dire. In 2016, a massive DDoS attack targeted DIN, a company that manages internet traffic for major websites like Twitter, Netflix, and Spotify. The attack caused widespread outages across the United States and Europe, making it impossible for users to access these popular platforms. It was a stark reminder of how vulnerable our digital infrastructure can be to these kinds of attacks. And it's not just about inconvenience. DDoS attacks can cost businesses millions of dollars in lost revenue, recovery costs, and reputational damage. In some cases, they can even lead to legal liabilities if sensitive data is compromised. So, yeah, not great. Just like any self-respecting supervillain, hackers have an arsenal of different DDoS attack methods at their disposal. Each method utilizes a different approach to overwhelm the target, and understanding these differences is key to defending against them. First up, we have the brute force approach volumetric attacks. These are your classic DDoS attacks, like the Black Friday scenario we talked about earlier. They rely on sheer volume, flooding the target with so much traffic that it collapses under the pressure. It's like trying to drown someone in a kiddie pool full of nickels. Unpleasant and surprisingly effective. Then there are protocol attacks, which are a bit more sophisticated. These attacks exploit weaknesses in the protocols that govern internet traffic. Think of it like exploiting a loophole in the rules of a game to gain an unfair advantage. Not exactly sporting, but hey, neither is hacking. Finally, we have application layer attacks. These are the stealthiest of the bunch, targeting specific applications or services running on a server. It's like sneaking into a house through a doggy door instead of breaking down the front door. They may not be as flashy as volumetric attacks, but they can be just as damaging. Section 5. Volumetric Attacks, Flooding the System Volumetric attacks are like the bulldozers of the DDoS world. They rely on brute force, overwhelming the target with a massive flood of traffic from multiple sources. Imagine a million pigeons, all suddenly deciding to roost on your car. That's a volumetric attack. One of the most common types of volumetric attacks is a UDP flood. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol, which is a way for computers to send data without confirming whether the recipient is ready to receive it. It's like sending a million letters without putting return addresses on them. The recipient is flooded with mail, but they have no way to tell the sender to stop. Another popular method is the ICMP flood, which exploits the Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP is used by devices to send error messages and other network information. In an ICMP flood, attackers bombard the target with ICMP packets, overwhelming its ability to respond and causing it to crash. Section 6. Protocol Attacks – Exploiting Network Protocols If volumetric attacks are like using a battering ram, protocol attacks are like picking the lock. They exploit vulnerabilities in network protocols, the rules for data transmission. One example is a SYN flood, targeting the TCP handshake process. 
Attackers send a flood of SIN requests but never complete the process. This ties up resources, making the target unavailable to users. Another example is a smurf attack, exploiting the ICMP protocol. Attackers send ICMP echo requests to a network's broadcast address, spoofing the victim's IP. This floods the victim with traffic, potentially crashing it. Section 7. Application Layer Attacks, Targeting Weak Points Application layer attacks are the ninjas of the DDoS world. They're stealthy, targeted, and often difficult to detect. Instead of overwhelming the target's entire network, these attacks focus on specific applications or services running on a server. Imagine a website with a search function. An attacker could launch an application layer attack by sending a massive number of complex search queries, overwhelming the server's ability to process them. This would make the search function, and potentially the entire website, unavailable to legitimate users. Another example is a HTTP flood, which targets web servers by sending a massive number of HTTP requests, the same kind of request your browser sends when you visit a website. These requests can be disguised to look like legitimate traffic, making them difficult to distinguish from real users. It's like sneaking into a concert by blending in with the crowd. Section 8. A peek into the hacker's toolkit, DDoS tools on Kaylee Linux. Now, for the techie bit. Kaylee Linux, a popular operating system for ethical hackers and cybersecurity professionals, offers a range of tools that can be used to simulate DDoS attacks in controlled environments. I repeat, using these tools for any other purpose is like trying to perform open-heart surgery after watching a YouTube tutorial. Don't do it. These tools are essential for security researchers and professionals to understand how DDoS attacks work and develop effective defenses. It's like studying a virus under a microscope to find a cure. By simulating attacks, they can identify vulnerabilities in their systems and patch them before real attackers can exploit them. Section 9, LOIC and HOITS, Simple Yet Effective Weapons LOIC, which stands for Low Orbit Ion Cannon, is a DDoS tool that's as subtle as its name suggests. It's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. LOIC works by flooding the target with UDP or TCP packets, overwhelming its ability to respond. It's a popular choice for amateur attackers due to its simplicity and ease of use. HOIC, or High Orbit Ion Cannon, is essentially LOIC's bigger, badder brother. It's like the Death Star to LOIC's TIE Fighter. Choichi boasts more advanced features, allowing attackers to launch more sophisticated attacks and bypass some basic defenses. However, both tools are relatively easy to detect and mitigate with proper security measures. Section 10. Metasploit, the Swiss Army Knife of Cyber Attacks. Metasploit is the Swiss Army Knife of hacking tools. It's a versatile framework that can be used for a wide range of cybersecurity tasks, including penetration testing, exploit development, and yes, even DDoS attacks. Metasploit includes modules for launching various types of DDoS attacks, including SYN floods, UDP floods, and HTTP floods. It also allows attackers to automate attacks and target multiple victims simultaneously. It's like having an entire army of robot hackers at your disposal. However, Metasploit is a powerful tool that should only be used by trained professionals for ethical purposes. In the wrong hands, it can be incredibly dangerous. Think of it like a chainsaw. It's a valuable tool for cutting down trees, but you wouldn't want a toddler playing with it. Section 11. The Importance of Ethical Hacking As we've seen, DDoS attacks can have serious consequences, disrupting businesses, compromising personal information, and even threatening national security. That's why it's crucial to understand how these attacks work and how to defend against them. Ethical hackers and cybersecurity professionals play a vital role in this fight. By simulating attacks in controlled environments, they can identify vulnerabilities and develop effective defenses before real attackers can exploit them. It's like having a security system for your computer network. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use this knowledge wisely and ethically. Don't be that person who uses their newfound knowledge for evil. Instead, be the hero who helps protect the internet from those who do. And if you're ever unsure about something, just remember, don't click on suspicious links, keep your software updated, and for the love of all that is holy, use a strong password. This concludes our public service announcement. You're dismissed. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to subscribe Ministry of Hacking for more.